Good day, is this working? I guess it's working. Check, check, yeah, all right. Just a hello, my daily or nightly hello, as I've been doing it, as I can, doing an update on things. Um, yesterday I was trying to uh, work on the, um, like directed high frequency, um, sort of beam with Tesla coils and the uh, sharp um, pointy end to it. So, um, quickly realizing I need to find more objects to uh, build like a support for it so I could beam in and stuff, but not so much around here. You know, I don't want to build everything with cardboard either, so. Yeah, so what I did all day basically is I was on eBay uh, building a wish list, you know, uh, add to watch, add to watch everything that I would need, control boxes, switches, and things like that, uh, control panels, and isolators, and breakers, and that sort of thing. And um, even the most basic tools, you know, like um, levers and stuff for like screwing pieces of wood together and things like that. So, and I actually did have a bit of a chit chat with my folks, my parents about um, possibly um, doing a cleanup in their big garage and um, maybe get a space in there. They're about half an hour away, unfortunately, but um, I guess it would be a start. Uh, right now it's pretty well um, crammed with my dad's stuff, but um, maybe I could make myself a bit of a space in there. And there's already a lot of tools and stuff, so that could be helpful. A lot of scrap metal and wood and nails. And, you know, I wouldn't have to, like, you know, you can't bang around in an apartment and start building an enclosure and then, you know, putting a garnish of paint on there and seal, you know. So that's where I'm at. A lot of the stuff is, um, I want to take it a little bit further, even building the power cells, you know, and if you want, these need to be very symmetrical. So you need machining, you need a basic shop, you need to cut plates, you need to do all that kind of thing. And um, so pretty well, what I've been doing here is testing various uh, solid state electrolytes for something else. It's just what I've had was the cupcakes. Uh, mold. So that's what I use to test the properties of the electrolyte, the solid state peg. And just to give me ideas of what it can and can do and what the unusual effects are and taking that into consideration for, you know, the much more symmetrical big high voltage pile I'd like to build along the line, which wouldn't just be that. I've talked about it in other videos. I'm looking for piezoelectric capacitance plates. Um, so that would be an additional system, just layer them up and trigger a feedback pretty, um, I've talked about systems that could actually self, you know, by design naturally. But of course to do that, it's not really something you can do in a house and maybe even borderline industrial, like you have to buy stuff in um, scientific kind of, um, supply places maybe because the thing is I, I i knew about all the other solid state electrolytes you know like, like the popular one is growing the crystals yourself but um very inconsistent every batch is somewhat different some are better than others and then the piezoelectricity some will respond more than others then every frequency varies and you know you try and clone the crystals but you know how, how do you get the some you know the, symmet the symmetrical you need with that could be a challenge. Um, John Hutchinson used the um, Varian um, base crystal into a, you, know, you can see that on the internet, they sell that as a powder. You can make um, high dielectric, high dielectric, what am I trying to say? High dielectric value cap super capacitors essentially using that material. 
So, um, but the point is very expensive and I didn't want to go in that direction either. I figured it must be something around the house that could do the same thing that basically John was doing, right? So, you know, a lot of research, a lot of research. And um, honestly, with a lot of research, it was a bit of a fluke too. I got bored one day and I just opened up my shelves in the kitchen and um, everything I had in there, every spice, every seasoning. And I started looking at the ingredients <laughs> to try and motivate, you know, and that's where, you know, at the, 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 the roommate had this, uh, you know, the, the laxative stuff and uh, peg. And then I looked it up and then, oh my goodness, I stepped into a gold mine there. <laughs> so I never did buy him a new um, container of that, by the way. Something to put in the uh, Amazon wish list, I guess. Some more for me. Yeah, barium titanate, that's it. Very expensive stuff. Saw it on eBay. So you can make your own. Um, super capacitors which is super interesting but you need a special press again machining 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 right it's not something you can do in your kitchen with this stuff but it would be super interesting to um, experiment with you know why just make it a capacitor if you can uh, make it also electrostatic between um, two different natural potentials figure out a solid state well that basically is the electrolyte part of it that's pretty cool maybe extend on it barium ferrite pulse that magnet have a layer of that with the two plates you know have the feedback against the barium ferrite with anyways there's a lot of fun stuff there I used to have gallons of propylene glycol because I was on morphine therapy for 20 years. LOL. Morphine therapy must have been really bad, that pain for that. Wow. I'm sure you deserved it. Nobody deserves to suffer, that's for sure. <clears throat> So where was I just rambling on and on about all the stuff I need and the control panels because um, a lot of wave mixing and such and um, protection, security. I mean, not just for myself, but for the equipment, you know. Even when you're playing with the Bedini stuff and the inductive kickback, sometimes you get, you know, you need to emergency shut off. And then when you do that, see, something very interesting is, I know a lot of people know this, but a lot of people don't, is you don't necessarily need big inductive coils to get a massive kickback. You could have just one long wire, load it, and it's the high current disruption that will give you a massive current back so you load a 100 watt light bulb at the end of a 100 foot extension sharply disrupt that and you're going to get a kickback that if you interact with it could throw you across the room no capacitance no nothing no coils even so that's very interesting so if you really want um it's interesting, but sometimes it's not desirable if it's in the stage of your circuit, you don't want it, right? Especially if it's an emergency shutoff situation. So i um, been looking for protection for that because I'm getting tired, you know, when these tran transistors could be $25, closer to 50 Canadian when everything's imported and then little random events, kapoof, kapow. So a sort of um, radio-like shunt circuit that would after a certain threshold, direct the kick back to ground, dissipate it to ground, not back into the circuit. Sort of like a fail safe back um, emergency kind of thing. Caput, yeah, exactly. 
it's great when you when you're expecting it to go where you want it and collecting it but you know like i said sometimes the bigger the bigger we go that's an issue right if you want to upscale it and then this thing starts you know you start you know we're saying zero current but you know it's proportional to the ratio if you're going to generate kilowatts you're probably going to have maybe you know 100 watts of input you know sharply disrupt 100 watts of current i mean you're going to blow up something so it becomes much more of an issue when you upscale so i got to think about that bedini's simple method was um a little memo do not run without load <laughs> we'll blow up in your face <laughs> do not run without load hmm. maybe if you would have put a little red light to it it would have had more value proximity sensor no but honestly what happens when you have to have something you know goes wrong and you have to during an experiment or something emergency shut off can't wait for for the event to do its sweet smooth transaction it's random poof devices don't always like that sort of thing yeah the same thing you know what would be great about the recycled used to be the spring cleaning that's what i used to love you know right around now they, they'd have it and at night i'd go door to door where they'd had the where they put all their stuff and there was no restrictions back then you know industrial commercial junk it was all there nowadays they have all these limits or you have to bring it somewhere uptown in some uh, town building which has cameras and is all supervised you can't go shopping no more but that used up to maybe five six years ago oh my goodness that was like i, I mark it on the calendar I go there with a screwdriver and a um, and a little wheel wagon, and I literally take old microwaves apart right there on the spot. Grab the uh, transformer and the capacitor and the diode. Keep going to the next load. Up oh, another microwave. And sometimes, if a TV looked like it was easy to take apart, I'd uh, grab a few flybacks. I could easily rip it. Sometimes I just, you know break it right out of the circuit board and just do the rest at home but be careful you know the discharge you understand you know had the screwdriver set up for that but yeah i mean those were primarily the two things i'd go after the uh, flyback transformers because everybody would pitch their tvs and the microwave stuff it was like an all-you-can-eat buffet <laughs> Hey, look on eBay today for the stuff. I mean, a microwave capacitor is like, you know, $25, $30. I mean, not bad for one night when you can pull, you know, even five, six of those. You got to find your picks, right? What looks good in shape, you know, then doesn't look like it blew up or anything. Just someone that, that got a new one or got tired of the color or something, you know. I don't want to open something up that's full of bed bugs either. You know, that's kind of icky. <laughs> don't ask me what they'd be doing in the microwave, but you never know. Well, the microwave caps, some of them have built in resistors. So um, they'll unload as soon as there's no more input voltage safety thing. That could be a good thing, depending on what you want to do. But that could be considered leakage, I guess. In case of teleportation, oh my goodness, you're going ahead of me there. This is not things I want to talk to on the internet. <laughs> It's going to drive all my viewers away. <laughs> I'm trying to promote alternative energy systems, and then they're going to say this nut wants to teleport in alternate dimensions. That's the other side of me I can't talk about too much. Yeah, you don't want to piss people off either, because then they're like, well, some very nice people, you know, they, they, they give you um, 
support and then you don't want to make them the give the impression that you know you're you're maximizing your resources to what a lot would consider you know crackpot theories so at least with all the alternate energy stuff i can um i go right down to the original maxwell and um, at the end of the day you no know, nobody could really argue that because it is what it is and, and a lot of people in the uh, free energy community have replicated if not much better than me so you know i'm just trying to like re reward it in layman terms so to speak for those that you know don't understand the quote unquote secret but boy you know if i had everything i could really do interesting things all over did you see that manster very Hutchins? yeah i saw that it's about those i was like so mad at him <laughs> Because I'm, I'm going, I was just going online and those things are like, you know, thousands of dollars. It's like just a little tiny one is like 300. And I'm going, my goodness, that guy just like steps into it all, doesn't he? I think I know why he moved to the US. Canada was like, you know, like barking at a dead tree, basically. And like I said, a big thing with Canada, with this kind of work, is the stuff is big, is heavy, is all international. It takes a month to get here. You're going to pay two, three hundred dollars in shipping for a one hundred dollar item, plus the import fees. You know. Meanwhile, if you're in California, you get free shipping. The device is a hundred dollars. And depending on how big the people are, they'll even give you like a 30 day, you know, it'll guarantee it'll work kind of deal. And that's on freaking surplus equipment. So yeah, trapped in Canada. That should be the focus of the evening, trapped in Canada. No, no, you're not crazy at all. I'm just saying it, 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 it's 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 just the main. I, I, I like all that stuff. It's just because it's not the focus of my channel. I don't want to piss anyone off. That's all. Hey, you know what? When I have 10 million subscribers, I, I, I'll go on the sidelines a little bit. It won't be so bad if I, you know, piss off like 200. <laughs> Because that's the only thing I could depend on really to, to propagate this stuff is such as it is, is the subscriber base. Because then people can get the information. And from there, you know, word goes out and they try the experiments and they get their own aha moments. So that's the best I can hope for really. That's the um, first goal in all of this is just get the word out. And one way of doing that is that the more subscribers you get, the more, I hate how that works by the way, because they don't propagate you by relevance. They propagate you by your social score. So they leave that up to you. And that's part of the scam with YouTube, I think is like, they want you to advertise yourself. And if you look at the YouTube uh, AdSense, it's like a couple hundred dollars to get like 500, they'll guarantee you something like that, you know, like 500. Um, it's like, whoa, I'm not a bank. No, you know, like if it's, it's just, they really take advantage of, you know. But I guess people who have a lot of money to spend promoting their cat videos, that's how they get the millions, million subscriber views. But without doing that, I really, really literally have to depend on word of mouth because it's not really YouTube that propagates it because they want you to spend and then they'll propagate it based on their AdSense, you see. So I hate that, but it is the world. Everything is about the money, right? Yeah, I do. California has got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I notice most of the surplus, the junk stores on eBay, they're all in san francisco california los angeles they're all between there you know and then a few a few on the east coast 
but not as much as um, and the deals. I mean, you can tell, right? Because you go on one of these eBay people, and you know, these are real scrap yarders because everything is marked at a hundred dollars. They 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 don't take you know whatever it is they they put out there. They index a hundred dollars. So some of the stuff may not be worth you know two dollars, but they got at a hundred. Meanwhile, you find a treasure that's like two thousand dollars marked at a hundred dollars and it's like <laughs> I gotta get this I gotta get this but yeah those are fun what that reminds me as much as close to when I used to go to Dayton Ohio the Hamvention in the flea market area at uh, the Hannah Arena it would take you two days just to go through like basically the three arena like parking lots in the back and it was all outdoor vendors and that's what it was right and you'd have to rush because, you know, some you don't want to know everybody. There's like thousands of people there and you want the good deals, right? And they're all going after the good deals. And it was all that kind of stuff, you know, electronics, radio. Even though it was ham radio, it was all naturally electronic. So you got all your parts, components, uh, AC stuff, breakers. So all that stuff was available. So that's the closest thing that reminds me is going through these eBay people. Yeah, the graphene is, um, some people are having a hard time with it. Um, I don't know, I'm reading in the form, they tried to use it for one of their cells and it's non-conductive. So I don't know if they got sold a scam or what. It's supposed to be conductive from what I've read. But one person in his uh, form is saying, or somebody that posted in his form, is saying that no go, no beep, no nothing. So maybe specific kinds need to ex exhibit different properties. I don't know. Um, coatings of something else to make it super conductive, perhaps. And that's another thing. It's so difficult to find what you want. You know, people don't label things right. And sometimes really, really small details matter, like your purity value and the powder or something. Then you end up getting that and, you know, you, you got a quart of salt. So, yeah. I just had an idea. I don't know. I wonder if the power cells could be used as a sol solid state ion valve for the one wire system. And as that doesn't make any sense, does it? it? Just came to me. You know what? That's what my friend Chad GPT is for. Hello. Is this working? Initializing. What's to initialize? I'm here. It says thinking. Okay, maybe not tonight. You know, I'm trying to use the Microsoft, um, I don't know if anyone uses it, the um, to speak. It never, never works. Maybe one out of 10, you know, it, it, I guess it's not right off the computer. It goes back to Microsoft. So it's only when Microsoft feels like it, it responds and does the text. It's like everything's depending more and more. Opera, I hate that concept. You have to be online for everything. You're 60 miles north of Los Angeles. I bought my lab gear on eBay cheap. I found a tube driven audio oscillator. Nice. Could do lots of interesting things with that. See, what's interesting with tubes is they have so much redundancy of the uh, inductive kickbacks or in radio as well as the um, SWR, the reflected power. 
And in the good old days, you didn't have to worry so much about matching it. The, trans, the, the transmitter's impedance wouldn't be perfect, but what would happen is it would just be less efficient without harming the equipment. Being on AM, you could have like 10% efficiency and you'd still be heard 60 miles away. Those towers were like 400 feet up in the air. They usually just coupled uh, magnetically with a ring around the tower. <laughs> Tube driven, primitive, no tuner circuit or nothing like that. Let's go. You know what a cool thing is with that? Is you've got like literally half the power reflecting back. You know how much scalar wave that would have been back in the day, just swooping all over every... Maybe that's what kept all the devices like Moray stuff going. That, that's maybe food for thought. You don't do that anymore because transmitters don't, you know, they're, they're all perfectly resonant and tuned. You know, if you have uh, one watt of reflected power, you got to go back to the drawing board. It's no good. So antennas are designed today or transmitters to, to radiate as much of that as out and no, no reflected power or very as little as you can to maximize efficiency of the transmission wave. But yeah, Los Angeles, 60 miles north, that's, um, that's pretty close to John's place. You should go visit him one of those days. He's like down the street from you. Small town, though. I don't know what I'd do there. If I'm not working on stuff, I'd go insane. Very small town. Kind of like the same size as uh, where I live here. This, at least it's nice because it's California. His house was actually easy to find. You go on Google Earth, up from the sky, let me tell you, um, dome homes stick out very uh, from space. <laughs> Total fluke, but just a, like the second or third try. Then they said, nah, that can't be it. And by the way, I didn't have his address or anything. I was just on Google Earth. I knew he um, lives in California, in that small town. And uh, I just fired up Google Earth and right away, big white dome zooming in. And um, there's a green garage. Okay. Nice workshop, by the way. Man, I wish I had that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> almost sounds like the hitchhiking guide to the galaxy, but in this case, it's John's lab, right? <laughs> That's a good joke. He'd probably like that. Hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy with John. Interesting, interesting uh, person, John. Good to talk with. He just doesn't talk too much these days. He does his videos and all that, but I could understand I, I, at some point I wouldn't want to like spend an hour writing emails back, you know, big long <laughs> emails. Yeah, okay, let's see if this chat GPT thing is going to behave, because I had a question here. So let's try this again. What's wrong with Microsoft? Hello. I was wondering if I could use my solid state peg electrolyte cells that are dry cells as an ion 
valve that is fed from the one wire system at very high voltages, such as 200,050. No, I did that wrong. Such as 250,000 volts. and use the AV one wire diode plug Does that make any sense high voltage Let's see what it says. Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. It's giving me something back. So let's listen for the output. My goodness, it's so, maybe that's why I was slow. Um, Everybody's on it, I guess. So let's see what it has to say to my inquiry. Let's listen. Using solid state tank on the one volt electrolytes in dry cells as an ion valve with a one wire system at very high voltages, such as 200,000 volts, and an AV one wire diode plug requires careful consideration of the properties and limitations of the components involved. Here are a few points to consider. One, material stability and breakdown voltage. Peg-based electrolytes being polymers need to be carefully evaluated for their dielectric strength and stability under such high voltages. The breakdown voltage of the electrolyte must be higher than the operating voltage to avoid unwanted arcing or failure. Two, conductivity and ion transport. PEG electrolytes may allow for some degree of ion transport, which can function as a valve, but the efficiency and control of this process at high voltages can be unpredictable. The electrolytes must be tailored to handle high voltages without degrading or changing their properties. Three, AV one wire diode plug. The AV one wire diode plug can rectify and control current flow, potentially making it a useful component in the system. However, the specific interaction between this plug and the high voltage source must be carefully managed to ensure stable operation without damage to the plug. Four, safety concerns. Operating at such high voltages introduces significant safety risks, including electrical hazards and potential damage to components. Proper installation, grounding, and safety measures should be in place. Five, control and measurement. The ability to control and measure the ion flow through the PEG electrolyte is essential for the system to function effectively. This may involve using additional control circuitry or measurement devices. Six, resonance and impedance matching. Consider how the one wire system, high voltage source, and dry cells interact in terms of resonance and impedance matching. Proper tuning may be necessary for optimal performance. Seven, experimental setup. Given the speculative nature of such a setup, you may need to construct an experimental prototype to test the interaction between the PEG electrolytes, high voltage source, and diode plug. Uh, carefully monitor the system's performance and safety during testing. In summary, while using solid state PEG electrolytes as an ion valve in a one wire system at high voltages may have theoretical potential, it requires careful consideration of the material properties, system design, safety, and experimental verification. Always prioritize safety. I don't know if only of you heard any of that. Uh, unfortunately, the stupid system here that's as loud as it gets. So I don't know if you actually heard that, but um, Chad GPT's extra long explanation basically says, yeah, try it out, it should work. So one of these power cells here, could be used as a kind of ion valve. 
with high voltage with the one wire system. If there's any benefit to that, I'm not sure at this point. It's just something I thought of. All you don't have is a dress. Uh, well, like I say, just look for the big, huge white dome. Can't miss it. <laughs> but yeah, um, what else did I want to do here? I was wondering if I can drive a microwave transform transformer with a high frequency inverter. Uh, just picturing all the various stages in my head here of what I want to do. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm pretty well at the end of my game here as far as... Um, Unless something comes up and another um, weird idea, but um, just, just just limits of you know. I want to play with these cells some more, but I need to have a more pro setup to build a real Zamboni like stack if I want to go that direction. Same thing on the EMP thing, the gun thing. Um, I don't want to use hot glue for that. I mean, that's too flimsy. That was great for, you know, demonstrations and stuff, but um, won't be taken too seriously, you know, <laughs> with hot glue and popsicle sticks. And it can be good for professional um, statistic gathering either, if everything is always moving and so stability matters too. So again, I'm sorry if no one heard of when the computer was talking here, I'm trying to be interactive, but I don't know if I could change the setting somewhere here. Sometimes there's a setting to normalize the audio and sometimes that can at least make it sound louder because the volume on here is really bad. Control panel sound. And it says here's my monitor. Levels 100, advance. There's no enhancement. Loudness is already there. I guess I thought of it already. And it doesn't even give me the option to um, change, oh, there it is, the attack and release, release time. It's really not loud, but these cheap monitors, I guess, I wouldn't ion valve work with that tube audio oscillator I have. Would it, with a single wire and your quantum cells suck up any AM emissions? I actually have a video about that, a modification. Um, I don't know how you, maybe I can pull it up. Uh, it's right here. Well, I guess see. Now it's to remember which one it was now. But I had a diagram of that where it was a dipole essentially, which is two antennas. And um, it all goes into the uh, like a common. Uh, area like like a mold with the peg electrolyte in there where the two plates aren't touching so they can influence with the um, 
it was a kind of ambient to um, energy converter. I'm just not, I don't remember what I called it. And it's in my last week or so, no, oh, maybe two weeks, but it's there. Oh, the low legacy YouTube. Let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Maybe I'll get lucky. Because I did post a diagram. Uh, Quantum cell info. Is that it? Quantum potential to current. Uh, I really don't. There's so much info. I'm going to have to start organizing this because. Video for John. Maybe it's this one here. Because well, I had, I remember the schematic was at the end. But that's odd that I didn't put that as a feature because a lot of people ask about that, right? The environmental, um, the, the ether, and all that. And I had. Maybe it's this one here. Ah, right here. Brainstorming, it's called. Yeah, I got to fix that. Who would have known? It should be called VTA Driver by Joel Legacy, and I labeled it brainstorming. What was I thinking? No wonder I can find it. But here it is right there. I don't know if I can um, if I can get that to... Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe it's something like this you were talking about. Yeah. I don't know that these names, you know. I'm looking at my channel now. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, it's it's all good. It's just, you know what it is. I try and keep the titles really basic because when you I've noticed when I give out the big the the big title and details, it doesn't get any search hits. So you gotta keep it short. Uh, power cell conditioning, quantum energy update. You know, my my subscribers know what I'm talking about. But um, the people who are just coming in might get a little confused. So that's the issue with that. It's just so that YouTube, it hits in the search, you know, I got to use anything I can to try and get the stuff out there. Ugh. Yeah, that's the one. So I was able to take one of the cement cells out of the mold. That's interesting. Just like a um, ceramic structure. I like the, um, the finish with the cement. Copper oxide is almost as good, just the copper oxide one dried up really, really, really thick and solid. I've got a, some, some shielding around this one here to see if that does anything, capacitance as well. 
Yeah, so I'm literally trying to try, uh, I'm throwing everything I can at the solid state electrolyte and different compositions, uh, throwing various conditions at them. And now my latest, I want to do the different waves because they're very reactive to um, pulses and AC. So might be something more there. The more I know about this stuff, it's going to be better for the final product. Oh, I call it a product. It's not the product, but you know the final device, you know? There's an observation comment about the copper oxide. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the copper oxide, there's, there's, there's black copper oxide, there's red copper oxide. But copper oxide is interesting because it's also got semiconductor, the P junctions. It can, um, thermal properties. So things can get interesting with the copper oxide as well, interacting with different mechanisms. So spring is on, spring is nice here finally. I went outside to do some errands. I was on foot and I think I actually got a bit of a sun in my face. But uh, nobody really local into any of this stuff. Most of the time, if I do talk about it, it usually backfires. They think I'm crazy or something then nobody even wants to say hello when I'm on the street or something. They're all scared. And don't start talking to them about time and dimensions and all that. Oh my goodness. They want to, they want to talk about the hockey game and who's winning and that sort of thing. It doesn't interest me at all. You know, mainstream life, mainstream society. It's to me. I'd rather go on eBay all day and just hot list, you know, everything I wish I could have instead of wasting my time watching, you know, talking about sports and everything at the coffee shop. But I'm so stiff today, though. Oh, it's just up and down weather, I bet. You want to see the robot revolution take over? Well, uh, maybe Elon. <laughs> He's in his bubble. I said that the other night. Yeah. To have so much money like that and I'm not using it right. I can think of like a million things to do better than what he'd be doing. <laughs> I guess we could all say that. Yes. Yeah, you got bad days and good days. I get some I get some really stiff days where it's just I have a I feel like I that's why I always have to like exercise today. I um forced myself and I went uptown for some errands. It felt good. Anyways. So I gotta find the right frequencies to fix myself. One long story short. 
the right frequencies, the right frequencies to fix me physically and mentally. That's a challenge, isn't it? Mm. And I'm so itchy, I think it's the allergies. Uh, I just, oh, everywhere is just my eyes, my, my nose. <laughs> There must be allergies with, with all of the um, the spring, you know, scratch, scratch, scratch. Not usually like this. And I went out a lot today, so must be reacting to something. So yeah, eleven o'clock here. Yeah, so many, you know, sometimes I just wish I'd be able to you, to take a hammer, a couple pieces of wood, just make a base for 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 a a board to to, to, to have to, to mount stuff on, right? For projects, you know, if it's a transformer or whatever. You can't you can't run everything in the open forever and everything's a little wire here. And that's a, that that's part of the issue is um losses and in, unpredictable uh, behaviors because oh cheap cheap solder joints cheap wires and it's just a mess of spaghetti you need real electrical wiring real insulated wiring and if it's high voltage you got to give it that spacing in between because you don't want to even even with the insulators if they're too close they'll, they'll arc you know <laughs> You don't want that. Greetings, Joel. Greetings, Society of High Sciences. The PCB is best. Yeah, that's a good. Um, but I'm thinking uh, when I start messing around, we would like the big, like the high voltage. Um, like big radio like coils and that it's not as easy as mounting it on a little PCB when the whole thing, like one of the coils in the back of me here, you know, imagine if you got enclosed that plus everything else that's running there. So down the line, yeah, everything needs to be properly mounted and closed and, and the wiring has to be done right. Yeah, that's everything is so freaking expensive. As far as getting the stuff, a lot of it is, um, I am, how old am I? Oh my goodness. I am uh, 38 years old. Yes, that's it. I just turned 38 in February. And um, most of the stuff is an accumulation of since I was 15 or so and I got into ham radio. So with that, you do electronic projects, you build your own power supplies and that. So you're encouraged to start a little electronics a corner. So a lot of the, um, about half the parts is just basically surplus from my teenager days. The other half is the more recent stuff, you know, SCRs, part gaps, and that sort of thing. Tesla coils and voltage transformers. I had a friend who, who, who let me borrow a lot, you know, I had all that equipment there in my old lab that, that I lost. So mo most of the uh, diagnostic equipment and NASA calibrated equipment and uh, analyzer this vector that i had it all well access to anyways i haven't been able to recover that because i mean just a curve tracer an old one is like two thousand dollars on ebay like oof.
You're 43, not bad. Yeah, Eric Dollard. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, those are the reminisce people of the Dini's gang. I find they write too. I find they write too many books and not enough substance. But I mean, there's good stuff in there. It's just there's only so many ways to to peel an apple. You know what I'm trying to say? How many ways do you wanna? What I'm getting at is I think they've been recycling a lot of, you know, the 90s stuff they were all into. Which is fine, you know, every, you know, people are into old radios, more people are into this, people are into that. We all have our, our singular focus that we specifically like for one reason or another. But... Um, Yeah, them too, you know, Eric Dollard. I think he, he, in his own ways, you know, explained the same thing as many times as he could over and over again to essentially explain the same thing. You know, you have to start getting creative after a while to sound like it's original. <laughs> I guess it's not your fault if half the people don't understand what the stuff is all about. And of course, there's the barrier with everyone, including myself, unfortunately, when you're making new, new or less known discoveries is the terminologies, right? Negative energy, negative energy, they say. A newbie is gonna say, okay, so I just flipped the polarity of the battery and I got myself negative energy because you said negative, right? Who knows, maybe I was that fool that thought that. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> but then the idiot finally figured out he got he he was had and said, I'm gonna research this a little further. It was just a term, just a slang. Negative in the sense as as its opposite as what we consider traditional energy. That's all it is. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> Whatever, I guess you have to be in the in club. Yeah, well, negative polarity. That sort of used to confuse me when I was a kid in the ham people. Flip the battery and the meter just shows minus instead of plus. It's the same power. The motor will run in backwards. A lamp will light up the same way. An LED might blow up if you take it too far from its reverse voltage rating. Anyways, I'm just rambling on and on here, am I? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Saying the same things is just, it's too bad it wouldn't be more universal. I think a lot of this stuff here and all the, um, Alternative sciences is not so much nobody understands what it's just the barriers become everyone's different way of explaining what they observe. No standard, right? So I wanted to try something, yeah. I guess I'll do that. Every time I want to try something, and it always ends up, I start talking about it, and then it ends up being too late for me to actually try it. I'm gonna take a, take apart, not take apart, but take out my, uh, one of the microwave transformers and see 
if it'll work at higher frequencies. And then take note if it does, and they maybe use that for um, a project. Oh, the transformers and all that. Yeah, I'm just trying to, um, the scalar waves and the gravity waves and all that stuff. Tesla's, Tesla's the pioneer and all of that. But he was not interested so much into um, trying to map and plot all the different wave interactions and what they do to the various elements so much. He was focused on one specific goal but he, i'm sure he made several observations in his mind that he just never bothered to document because again it wasn't part of his focus but these wave interactions you know um interface with the fabric of our reality with time you know if you can, um, you know, the saying is if you can nudge something in the fourth dimension, let's just say, you know, if you move something in the fourth direct and the fourth dimension, then you change the shadow, right? Because you moved it, the, the shadow form changes. The shadow can be, you know, you know, the, our dimension. So what I'm getting at is, you can engineer the fabric of our reality if you would really know what you're doing. So super interesting stuff. But um, no one in public institutions anyways has bothered to try and even attempt on mapping at all. I think the closest one Badini mentioned it was uh, Walter Russell with his little... Um, you know, a little vibrational thing and all the elements and everything is just a, a harmonic harmony and different wavelength of the same energy. I think that's the closest explanation of it all. So here we are. I'm surprised that there's a lot of, well, I mean, I, I guess I consider this a lot, but all the people, you know, are a small group here and I just go on random and late at night and there's so many that are here watching live because I know when I end now, the video stays and it shows as a, uh, even though it's live, anyone can rewatch it later. So that's pretty, I was concerned about that, you know, talking for an hour and then, you know, if 20 people saw it, what about the rest? But they can all watch it after and comment and everything, which is really good. I feel I may as well keep doing this, kind of like whoever wants to see the background, the, the brainstorming, the, the thought process, the background of me and all of that and how I'm getting to my ideas, they can watch these clips. They're long, obviously, because they're, they're unformatted. And they could, uh, if they don't like this, I guess they could just keep watching the, the regular videos as I explain the concepts. But this is good too, because um, like I said, it's, it's an open discussion at the same time. I can interact with the chat. If people have questions and they know I'm usually on, they can come in during live sessions and hey, what do you think of that? But a lot of questions, though, you know, I, I just know what I know, what I've tried. What I've... I wish I could answer every question, but I can't. But I try. You know, I have a lot of questions, too. Actually, probably more so than most people ask me. That might be surprising to some, but... Questions sometimes, and I'm even too shy to go out and ask because it's like, so I got to try it myself. But as I'm telling you, it's not for a lack of questions.
people watch all my videos and they go, oh my goodness, this guy is so good. There was a lot of questions to, you know, the video is, is a, you know, that could have been three weeks of research summed up in like 20 minutes. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to. But yeah, there's a whole backstory to all of those videos. It's not as swift as they look. Ambient energy harvesters, I've built a number of them. I've, I've designed a number of them. I've tested a number of them. They were great. I have one that I used to drive a Don Smith Capogen coil and it kept running at over a thousand volts and kept its spark gap going off from the ambient. Then I had it on a little plate going ta 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 so it was basically like acting like a reed. And that momentum created was the actual switching, kind of like half of the Bedini wheel. And during that regaging time, it would build up from the, um, it would charge a capacity. I've got it on my, it's one of my early videos. And it actually was being rectified by a vacuum tube, very high voltage I was getting out of this. And it was a cold, cold reaction, the rectifying. And you could see the um, the blue glow from it, which was remarkable because it was all from the ambient. So yeah, that was um, the Capogen coil was what I used to couple it all with. That was the best um, method. I had two different um, antennas as far away as I could have them in the yard, both with uh, 50 ohm isolated cable coaxial run at 100 feet each away, up at about, I'd say, 45 feet in the air. And that kicked on a small oscillator that quickly um, generated very high voltages. And I didn't know what to do with it, so I fed a tube. I figured I may as well generate x-rays, more radiant energy, right, with it. And that thing was running a switch, tuck, 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 electrostatic. I got a video of that. No one really appreciates what's happening, maybe because they don't understand it. No one really asked me anything about it either. It's just, it's just there, the whole thing running with the Don Smith setup and everything. And, and ironically, it was one of my earlier videos before I even started playing with the Bedini stuff. You know, sometimes you like replicate stuff and you fluke it, but you have no clue what's actually going on until like years later. And then you're like, oh my goodness, I could have made that so much better. <laughs> no, no gravity batteries. Those seem interesting. The washing machine pump. Yeah, working on that. That's right. Something like it, I showed it the other day. It's in the works, three phase hard drive motor driving it. And here's the generator part here. And my three phases are coming here through a three phase rectifier. I don't need this. It's just, I put it on there to test it when I spend it like this with my hand here. So very smooth operation. See how long it goes just by giving it a, I mean, this thing, I, I could go like this and it'll start spinning. So very hard drive, right? So what I want to do is set up an awesome reactive three-phase controller 
and um, resonant and do some feedbacking and see what we get with this. But again, all projects, you know, uh, gotta figure out what to prioritize on. <clears throat> Yeah, the whole heart, the whole assembly is really, really well built. I just need to work on the whole, you know, the important part of it, actually. The reactor. Yeah, it is. You see, I just give it a little tug and it just... And if you measure the voltage, that's like 30 some volts that comes in just from that. And it was like no force at all. You saw it was that I could blow on it and it's not even a wind and it all. Because Bedini said, you know, keep the friction. It's very worth it to, 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 to have the less less friction makes a big difference with these kind of things. Yeah. So that that's that was part of that making it um, very easy to uh, spin. And fast fast I want super speed. I um, had an experiment. I had a, I don't have it no more, but I had a um, an external three phase controller, and I fired up the motor just for fun, you know. And when that thing started to spin, it went so fast that it started to go like this almost like it was going to fly off the table. And when I held it, the G-force on there was like phenomenal. I mean, I, it was crazy. And um, I, I carefully placed it back on the table. I'm, surpri I'm surprised I didn't break it. And then while it was going crazy like that, I, I shorted out the rectifier to, to see if I can get a good spark. It caused the whole thing to, to, to stop at once and, and it, <laughs> it goes up in the air and I actually caught it, you know, because uh, like two feet, it just jumped off the table with this, you know, the force of the sudden stop. I said, oh, I didn't think it was going to do that. I actually have, I have it, I don't know if I can find it. I might be able to. Long ago, I had a video or a picture. I think it's a picture of that little generator running an LED. And um, it's spinning. On its own. Well, obviously, I started it, but it ran the LED for minutes until it, you know, as you saw it slowly go down. And I thought that was just interesting because, you know, I had it on the table there and it's just spinning and spinning and slowly de accelerating. Meanwhile, the LED is there and I'm, oh, that's really, really good. Um, so low resistance, you know. But, but but don't short it out. Oh my goodness. Tong, all of a sudden it just dead stop.
<laughs> no, but I'm thinking, you know, have you had those toys? It's like that ball thing that, that you go like this and it's, it starts to build a G-force and then it gets faster and faster. Like, can't someone make a generator out of that concept? Then you just go like this, nah, 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 and the thing is creating like loads of potential. <laughs> yeah, well, I've never really, again, it's, I was always, I just did a few tests here and there with it. The um, goal one day, like I said, is big resonant reactive controller that's timed and everything and feedbacks it and does exactly that, self-sustained and maybe a little bit more out. That always is the goal, right? But from the way I see it, it it's all about perfect um, reactance, which is resonant condition with the capacitor and the coils and um, resonance amplification through resonance, magnetic coupling, keep that loop open like Bedini would say. So there's a few things on the checklist there, but. Yep. That's your goal, awesome. So yeah, I guess I better um, call this quits for tonight. I know I didn't not much substance, just a lot of talk. I was actually going to take out the microwave transformer and do some experiments, but sometimes I'm, I'm just not motivated, especially live, because you know, can't can't can cut out the mistakes when you're live, right? It's like, oops, I pressed the wrong, I, 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 I probed the wrong wire. It's half an hour reading zero. <laughs> no, it's not quite that bad. By errors, what happens is sometimes I, I pronounce the pronunciation of certain words I have a hard time with. For me, a few tongue twisters, you know. Mm. Well, yeah, as I was saying, I'm just sorry I went quiet there. I was just um, trying to get through the card. The laptop is, the writing is so small, you know, so I'm trying to read the um, all the chats here. And, oof. So yeah, anyways, as I was saying, I'm going to wrap it up there. And, um, good night, everyone, or morning, or whatever it is. And I will keep everyone posted as I get along. And um, I will keep doing these little live sessions, you know, the in-between, the uh, rationale background of, of what's going on. And we'll take it from there and thank you all for watching and your input and your continued um, feedback and whatnot. So we're all in this together, I guess, but I don't know if that's a good saying anymore, but Hey, have a good day all.